morning to all of God's children. Amen. As the scripture says, let everything that I have breath praise the Lord. Just the mere fact that we are here this morning, standing on our own two feet, clothed in our right mind, we have breath. So we're going to ask that you to use that breath this morning and help us lift up the name of Jesus. As we sing this song, glory, glory, hallelujah. It says, since I lay my burden down. Well, glory, glory. Come on. Thank you. 
was saying to him. Then he opened his mouth and told him, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs are the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in the heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs are the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Thank you for the reading of the word. Father God, we thank you. I thank you this morning, dear God, to bring me peace this morning. Thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for your outstretching. Thank you, Father, that you fed me when I was hungry. Oh, me when I was sick. I want to just say thank you, Lord. Open down and up today in this beautiful place, dear God. Father, where prayer has been asked, voice has always been found. Father, I want to thank you for a pastor this morning. I want to thank you, my Father, for him and his family. Father, continue to bless him. Crown his head with wisdom and understanding this morning, dear God. Please, Father, not only him, dear God, but every church door that's open in your name this morning. We ask, oh God, that you stop by today and say, give your blessings to him, dear God. I want to thank you, Father, for the one that you gave me, put by my side, dear God, to lead and guide me sometimes. Father, I need her, and I thank you for her. I thank you, dear God, for my children and their children. I thank you, dear God, for this church home. Oh, Lord, I just praise you this morning. Thank you, and I magnify you this morning, dear God. Thank you for Sister Davis dear God. Thank you, my Father, for the ministry here. I just thank you this morning, dear God. Open the eyes, my Father, and open that mind. Oh, Lord, I know that you're able this morning. I know you're able this morning. Touch this, this morning right now, Father. Oh, Lord, I just say thank you. I just thank you, Father God. Oh, Lord, will you know it will be open. I just thank you this morning. Father God, you are the all in all. You are my all in all, dear God. I just want to thank you this morning. Thank you for Jesus, the one that hung, bled, and died. Oh, Lord, I want to thank you this morning. Thank you, my Father. You didn't have to do it, Father, but you did it. I'm so glad you did. So, Lord God, these are the blessings I say. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.
one why do we sing why do we sing when we lift our hands to Jesus when we lift our hands to Jesus what does it really mean what do we
Just one more again to come to this place to come to this place and to worship him. We call your attention to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to ask all the choir members and the musicians to come down, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. In the New Testament, the book is 2 Corinthians, the chapter is 9, the verses are 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. The Apostle Paul is talking, he is ministering to the church at Corinth. He is reminding them that I don't have to remind you, but I am going to tell you anyhow. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. When you found it, you will discover these words. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, 
may have an abundance for every good work. I want to talk about living, loving, loving God through stewardship. We are still in the series called Loving God. We talked about loving God through faith. Loving God through truth. Today we talk about loving God through stewardship. Stewardship is what we ought to realize is not ownership. God is the owner. God owns everything. Everything we have, we received it because God loaned it to us. Everything we will receive in the future is because God will allow us to have it. We are not owners of anything. Many people lease a car. They would never own that car. They just lease that car. And when you lease the car, you have to be careful how you drive it. You have to be careful how far you go. You have to be careful what miles you put on it. Because you will never, ever, ever own that car. You are just leasing that car. When we look at our lives today, we don't even own ourselves. We are stewards over our lives. That's why the Apostle Paul says to us that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost lives in you. If you are saved, if you are born again, the Holy Ghost lives in you. That's why the Holy Ghost doesn't hit you. That's why the Holy Ghost doesn't attack you. He is the third person of the triune God. He is the intelligent being. He is God himself. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Ghost. He is never a it. He will never make you do what you don't really have your spirit to do? He is intelligent. People use the excuse all the time. Oh, they didn't know where they were because the Holy Spirit hit them. The Holy Spirit is not in the hitting business. He's in the influencing business. He's in the moving business. He's in the speaking business. He's in the instruction business. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Ghost. When we look at the text, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he deals with stewardship. He deals with the church. He doesn't talk to those that are not in the church. He deals directly with the church at Corinth. He says to the church at Corinth, just as he had said to them a year earlier, that you need to make sure you give. Your gift must be consistent. Your gift must be what God has appointed it to be. He says, I wrote a letter, I wrote a letter to the, the, the church at, at Macedonia, and they were slow starters. They didn't get it at first. But once the church at Macedonia received my word, they went ahead and they started preparing to give and they wished they could give, but they didn't have certain resources. But that that they had, they gave. Many people talk about, I'm on a fixed income. Big Mama used to say it like this. Yes, I'm on a fixed income and God fixed it. What she was saying was, it's not an excuse for not being good stewards over God's resources because you're on a fixed income. I dare tell you today, all of us are on fixed income. From the door to the door, from the back to the front, 
everybody under the sound of my voice is on a fixed income. God has fixed it. The Bible teaches, the Bible teaches that promotion doesn't come from the east nor from the west. Promotion comes from above, from God himself. How many of you have been passed over some blessings? How many of you have been passed over some job positions? How many of you, 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 you got a job, but just not the job you should have had? Let me tell you, promotion doesn't come from your supervisor. Promotion comes from God himself. Therefore, our payments, our gifts, our wages come from God. And since God owns everything, right. and because God has everything, yes, sir. and because God is the one who, who gave us everything, Amen. we ought to manage what God has given us well. Oh, man. We're just stewards. We, we are, we're stewards. We are those that God has chosen to supervise what we have. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're just managers. God has chosen us to manage what we have. Amen. If you got children, if you have children, God has put them in your presence so you can manage them well. Yeah. If you have time, it's not even your time. God has put time before you so you can manage it well. There are some people who are busy about it. They never have time for God. They never have time for anybody else. It's a shame when you're just so busy that you don't have time for what God has given you. I said to you a few Sundays ago, don't let your blessing become your curse. Don't, don't let your blessing become your curse because what happens is we ask God for something, we beg God for something, God gives it to us, then we focus more on the creature or the created more than the creator. It becomes our curse. It becomes our thorn in the side. It becomes the thing that takes us down the drain. Some people will even tell you, they will say to you that, you know, I don't have it like I used to have it. Well, I'm with you. I understand it. I mean, some job pay real good. And now I don't have it like that. But one thing I do have, I give whatever God gives me Amen. back to the Lord so he can bless it even more. Amen. Amen. Some of you, your income has been cut in half. For all of us, meat has gone up. For all of us, vegetables has vegetables have increased. For all of us, gas. Right. I remember, I remember when gas back in the nineties went up to a dollar and thirty cents. I was like, man, that's amazing! A dollar and thirty cents for nine tenths, not even a full gallon of gas. Now it has doubled, it has tripled, it has gone up and come back down and then on its way back up again. But regardless of what the economy does, regardless of what the, the legislature does, regardless of who's president, I believe that God is going to protect his own regardless of what goes on around us. Amen. Amen. David says it like this, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Yes. I've never seen the righteous seed begging for bread. Now that doesn't mean that there are not people that are begging for bread. Some folk gonna beg when they got a whole loaf of bread under their arms. Some people gonna beg just because they can get more. But God has a way of blessing us regardless of who is in charge. God is still in charge. Regardless of who we see in the White House, who we see in Congress, God is still in charge. Don't flinch. Don't get upset. God is still in charge. That's why we are warned. Don't, don't get satisfied. And don't get so braggadocious on your job. Because your job can shut down right now. Because just because you make hundreds and thousands 
and zeros that are long on the on the right side of the comma doesn't mean that you going to be in that position all your life. If you don't know, let me just tell you, it doesn't matter how much money you make if your health is failing, money can't buy health. You can have the greatest doctors in town. And if God does not sustain the mind of the doctor, does not lead him and guide him in the right medication, that doctor is just a quack. That's right. That's right. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Our mind belongs to God. Right. Our strength belongs to God. Our focus belongs to God. Yes, sir. Us as individuals belong to God. I usually leave this story for Father's Day, but since we're very close, let me just share with you. There was a rich boy and there was a poor boy walking beside the riverbank. And the rich boy decided to taunt the poor boy. The rich boy said, you see that ship, that yacht floating on the great seas. He says, that yacht belongs to my dad. Went on a little farther, he says, you see that BMW, that Jaguar, you see that Lexus, you see that Lamborghini, all those are sitting on the ground over there. That belongs to my dad. He says, you see, you see that airplane flying in the sky? That 737, my daddy owned that. It's his own private thing. The jet that's on right side of it, the jet that's on the left side of it, they belong to my dad. The poor boy felt very bad by then. He looked up toward heaven. And he had no answer, but he looked toward heaven. Yes, sir. And he looked at the rich boy and he said, well, you see the sea that your daddy's boat, your daddy's yacht is so known, that sea belongs to my dad. You see the ground, that, that Lamborghini, that, that, that ground, that, that BMW, that ground that that Mercedes Benz is sitting on, that ground belongs to my dad. You see the skies that, that your daddy jet and your daddy planes are flying in. That sky belongs to my dad. Yeah. Matter of fact, not only do the planes, not only do the cars, not only do the sky, not only do the jet, not only do the plane belong to my daddy, your daddy belongs to my dad. Right. What he was saying, the poor boy was just enough to know that even though I'm poor, the God that I serve owns everything. And regardless of how rich you become, God is able to bring one up and God is able to bring one down. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Malachi says it like this. Somebody said, there he goes. Malachi says, whatever you do, Make sure you bring me all the tithes into the storehouse. Yes. That there may be meat in my house, said the Lord. He said, this whole nation, this whole nation has been cursed. And you've been cursed with a curse because you have not obeyed God. Let me tell you, we are cursed not just because we haven't brought in the tithe. We are cursed because we have not obeyed God. Look, we disobeyed him. We we turn away from him. We've chosen other gods. We have chosen gods that have hands and cannot touch. We have chosen gods who have arms and cannot hug. We've chosen gods who are made of wood, metal, and stubble, and that will corrupt and fade away. But the God I serve is an all-seeing God. The God I serve is all-knowing God. The God I serve is God all by himself. He wasn't elected God. He wasn't selected as God. He wasn't created as God. He wasn't voted in as God. He always is God, always has been God, and always will be God. Amen. And he owns everything. Yes, sir. The, Paul, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he says to us, in your giving, make sure you 
respect the principle of giving. He says, the equation is already fixed. The equation is, those who give sparingly shall be rewarded sparingly. Those who give bountifully shall be rewarded bountifully. Yeah. Well, let me fix it for you. The poor can give sparingly and the rich can give sparingly. Yeah. The poor can give bountifully and the rich can give bountifully because God's economy is fair. It's fair, it's fair, it's fair, it's fair. It doesn't discriminate regardless of race, creed, or color. It doesn't discriminate based on who you are. It doesn't discriminate based on your community. God is sure enough fair. If we have five months behind us in the year of 2023, look at your giving to the Lord. And if your giving to the Lord is only one hundred dollars out of five months, well, I don't see how you did it. What are you talking about, preacher? Because I know if you're saved, I know that if you're born again, I know that ten percent off the top is coming out, and you're rushing to the house of the Lord. Paul says that I don't want any giving when I show up. So what he did was he sent Titus and two other brothers to the church at Corinth so he could prepare them to give. He said, I, I wrote the letter a year ago, and maybe you all didn't hear me. Maybe you didn't understand me. So I'm sending these three brothers so they can be my interpreter. There are some people in the room who, who don't really understand my words. But we have an interpreter who can make sure they understand the words. So the Apostle Paul says, I'm sending these three brothers to make sure you have a good understanding of what I've been talking to you about. And so he says, he says, whatever you do, just be just realize I'm not asking you to give grudgingly. I'm not asking you to give out of compulsion. I'm not asking you to give because somebody has pressured you to give or coerced you to give. He says, I'm not asking you to give because somebody twists your arm to give. I'm telling you to give because you have love for the Lord even through your stewardship. You ought to love your Lord even through your stewardship. Your stewardship. You know, we say we love the Lord. Oh, when the choir is singing, oh, happy day. Oh, we love the Lord and we ought to celebrate God. Oh, when he washed, he washed my sins away. We ought to be just as excited about giving to the Lord as we are about the Lord giving to us. God has given to us. Just, just name a few. What if God, he's giving you breath. He's giving you blood. He's giving you life. And for many of us, he's given us a new life. He has washed us up. When they say, this is just not a slain, when they say, he picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. The text declares, you ought to give. And you ought to give back to the Lord. Well, this is a little demonstration that some of you in the room have seen. Just uh, act like you've never seen it before. It's not my original plan. It's not my original de demonstration. I saw it many, many years ago, some 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. It was done by the late Pastor Manson Johnson of the Holman Street Church, but it's been proven to be effective, so I will do it today. There are three different categories that I want to address today. What is that? That one belongs to God. What is this? That belongs to me. What is this? Others. And others mean anybody or any persons or any group of persons. And so I have here big bowls and small bowls. Now you tell me where I should put it. Should I put the big bowl before God? 
Because he is God, you know. Should I put the big bowl in my spot? Because you do I know I need a lot, right? Or should I put the big bowl where other folk are? Because if you got family members and friends, like I have family members and friends, they want you to give, 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 and more giving. So I concluded that I put the big bowl right here where I am. I want to put the big bowl there because I know the God I serve says, if you give, it will be given unto you a huge amount. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Well, let's see if it happens. Let me just make things get a little equal here so we can uh, at least look like we're going gonna to do this thing right. And then other folk, you know, we can, we can give them a little something, something as we go. I have here some swine balls. And I just want to prove the point that God gives more to us than we give to him. And I just want to make sure that I give God at least 10% of everything I do. And if I really, really love God, I ought to give him an offering also. So I have some slime balls here. And children looking at them like, man, what are you going to do with that after this demonstration? I like to have them myself. So these slime balls, it says here that it is for five plus year olds. And these slime balls has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve in there. And if I want to give God some, I just move my decimal one place to the left, and it tells me what I ought to give God. And we can do that with money. If you have fifteen dollars, you move your decimal point one place to the left. That's a dollar and fifteen, a dollar and fifty cents, right? But I have twelve, and these are these are slime balls, and so I can't split them in half and give them to God. But because I love God so much, I'm going to give God the first one, and then I'm still not at 10%, so I'm going to give him the second one, so I make sure I give God a tithe and an offering. Oh, yo, guess what? The rest of them belong to me. All of them belong to me. And God is all right with, with what belongs to me. All the rest of them belong to me. Next thing I got is some toy cars. Every boy in the room perked up. Wonder what they're going to do with those. The sign declares that I have 20 cars in here. If I'm going to give God 10%, I'm going to give God two of them, right? And as I give God two of them, then I'm going to take all the rest of them and guess where they belong? They belong to me. All of them belong to me. Oh, they're not going to come out. Well, all of them belong to me. I put them right here. Everything belongs to me. It ain't going to fit out a while either way, right? All this belongs to me. Look what God, God has, and look what I have. You know, the way we treat God is not fair. He owns it. We're just stewards over it. Well, I got. I have 15 balls in here. If I give God one, I'm still not at 10%. I give him two. Okay, now I'm giving God two. Then I have all the rest. Well, look at that. I got 15 balls here. I give God two because I want to give God a tithe and an offering. And I have all the rest. All the rest. And when I leave one in there, God still wants me to have it. I have... So fingernail polish, every woman in the room in this good fingernail polish, looking at me. Brother Miles, you say all of them like, woo, I mean, maybe I need to listen to this sign. And when I look at this fingernail polish, it's six of them. I have to give at least one to God. And all the rest of them belong to who? Belong to me. All of them belong to me. Ladies, all of them belong to me. I may not wear it, but guess what? It belongs to me. I have some teas for those of you who play who play golf, those of you who can golf. Now, this is not my game, so I just got it because it added color to the demonstration. And I got it because these were the cheapest ones in the pack for 90 a pack. 
If it's nine up, if it's nine of them in here, how many belong to God? There's three. How many belong to God? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine belong to God. Guess where the rest of them go? All of them go. My, my, my. Look how God just keeps on blessing me. And in the midst of my blessings, my kinfolk now, they always want you to know that and remind you that they are your kinfolk. My buddies, my friends, when they see my blessings about to run over, as a matter of fact, with the cars, they will run over. Of course, they need some light bill money. Of course, they, they need something else. They, of course, they need a little of this and a little of that. Because I've discovered, I've discovered that folk will pay for what they want and beg you for what they need. I think I'll say that two more times. People will always pay for what they want and they will beg you for what they need. See, because they're going to beg you and they know you're not going to turn them down. Oh, I got to have my medication, so let me give them this. Now they spend everything else, they're going everywhere else. I, I, I gotta have my rent, so so let me let me make sure I ask them of that. But did you notice I didn't take it from what God has blessed me with? I didn't take it from what I had given back to God. I didn't take it from the tithe and the offering. I took it out of my back. Because when you really look at it, what God got, it looked like if God was a human, he'll be struggling. <laughs> I got a cup that's already running, is already running over. And it's only, it's only 90%. It's not even, God gives us what we need, when we need it, the way we need it. He keeps blessing us. And we got stingy folk that want to know, should I give on the net or the gross? Let me just share with you. If you want a net blessing, give on the net. But if you want a gross blessing, give on the gross. Young folk ask you, what's gross in that? You see, gross is what you have before you pay your bills, before they take out insurance, before they take out money. You need to make sure that you are blessed of God in such a way that you are not stingy with God. Old folks said, don't bite the hand that feeds you. And when you don't give God what God has blessed us with and what God requires of us, then we bite the hand that feeds us. So, I didn't have Nintendo and Sega Genesis when I grew up. I didn't have stuff that boys have today. The, the thing that I had were marvelous. It's 50 in the bag, so I give two, four, five. The rest of them belong to me, but God just been good to me. And we have in here, Brother Whitlock, when we played models, when, when I was their, their age, we had what was called a doper. And guess what? It was the biggest marble, and it could wipe out several marbles at a time. But because I love the Lord so much, and because God has tremendously blessed me, I know I could use it, but I want to bless God with it. So I have 45, 49, 44 now. And all of it belongs to God, but God has entrusted me with it. I'm just talking about time. Then every now and then I like to go bowling. I have some bowling pins, and these are trophies because I... I, I, I beat Sister Woods in one game one time. And it is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. People say, he ain't got to count one by one. We can count. Well, you act like you don't if you don't give back to the Lord. Where did I start? Ten. All ten of these I have been blessed with. So if I want to give a tithe to God, I'm going to give God one. And because God is good to me, I'm going to give him a second one. And I got all these. Yes. 
some of the professionals have their own little balls. They carry around sacks that they roll in because they really they want to present an image that I know what I'm doing. I only have two, so I want to give one to God. I have one for myself. And as God continues to bless me, I look at what other folk have. And the reason why they have that less is because they don't give. The text declares they have given sparingly. What they did is they spent 100% of theirs and begged for mine. Then I have all this for me. And you know, God doesn't need balls. He doesn't need bowling pins. And this is what God does. Malachi says it like this, that he will open up windows from heaven and pour you out a blessings that you have not room enough to receive. So God really doesn't need your money. But what God does, he takes the 10% because God can do more with the 10% than we can do with 90%. He takes the 10% and he blessed the person that was not stingy enough. He blessed the person that has given back to him with what he or she has given to God. So all this belongs to me. But to make it real, 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 real. Show us real. I mean like 100 real. I mean like so you can see it real. Well, I don't need an interpreter real. I have one dollar bills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, there's nine for me and one for God. Look at everything just running over. God promised that he will give it to me until it runs over. Five dollar bill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One for God, nine for me. Ten dollar bill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One for God, nine for me. One, two, three, four, twenty dollar bill. Let me start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One for God. And six for me. So I need a dump truck to take my blessings in. Because God has tremendously blessed me and my, my cup is running over and I don't have room enough to contain it all. And because I have given back to God, God just keeps giving back to me. So I need somebody to come in and help me because I've been shown up blessed because I gave God 10%. Right. And God really doesn't, he doesn't need your money. He says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that I might have meat in my house. There, there may be some light. There may be some cushion pew. There, there may be some carpet on the floor. The point is, you are not giving to God just because you're going to get blessed. You're giving to God because, first of all, he commanded you to. You give it to God because God has an economy that he keeps on blessing you and you love him for blessing you. You're going to give to God simply because it's already belongs to God and as it belongs to God, God just keeps giving it to you. And then at the end of the day, all that we've given God, God turns right back around and gives it back to us. And the economy starts back over all over again. There are some rewards to your giving. Number one, the giver is in, in, enriched. The giver is enriched so much so until they understand that the God we serve gives us everything. The God we serve owns everything. We're just stewards. We're just managers. We're just supervising it. It's important that we teach our children at early ages that give back to God because God will give back to you. Amen. We are enriched. Our family is enriched. Let me tell you, when Megan laid on life support, you better bet I was just saying, Lord, didn't know what to pray. Lord, bless my child. Lord, you are the great physician. 
God, you raise her up. We honor you today, God. God, you minister to him. And you minister to him so he can minister to her. Doctors didn't know. One, one nurse came in there, male nurse, African, he just happened to be African. That may be important, I don't know. But he came in and he was thinking, now she's out in a coma, he took the needle and stuck it straight into her arm. Now I have no medical experience at all, but I know you don't stick it straight through the arm until you get to the bone. He said, well, this is the, I said, look, don't you supposed to stick it in sideways? Well, I can't find the vein. Well, you ain't gonna find it digging through there like that. And then, then he said, Well, you wanna do it? I said, Oh, whoa, Lord, good God Almighty. Now righteous indignation has come up in me. He said, Well, you don't wanna do it? You wanna do it? You wanna do it? I said, No, you gonna do it right. And we're standing on each side of the bed and she doesn't know what's going on. And I've already talked to God that God will send somebody by who has a sound mind and this jerk comes in. He said, well, you want to do it? I said, no, you're going to do it right. He said, well, I'm doing my job. I said, take it out. I said, don't you have a little light that you can put on there that can find her vein? And by then, the nurse come in, is there a problem? I said, yes, there's a problem. He needs to get out of here. When you are right before the Lord, God will intervene in the midst of it. That's why if any of my loved ones go to the doctor, I am totally afraid of them being there by themselves because people are not doing their job properly and they will take them out of here faster than the disease will. They just there for a check -in. That's why I go once a year. And if I go once a year, let me tell you, I'm going to get all in when I can. And if something hurts me and forces me to the doctor, you got to believe I'm asking all kinds of questions because I am a giver. And I believe that God says he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. And that God says that he will put the devil on the run for our sake. God says that the whole nation is cursed because they would not obedient unto God. We're riding around here trying to hold on to a few pennies and a few dollars, and those few pennies or a few dollars are doing nothing but hindering our blessing. It enriches us. Giving enriches us. Then, secondly, the receiver. The receiver's needs are met. The needs of people are met. The, the receiver's Needs on that. That's why every now and then we got to give them a little something. I mean, just a little something. Yeah. Their needs are met. But let me just share with you, before I get on a path of just giving individuals something, we need to sit down and lay out a budget. I know that's right. We need to lay out a budget because if you can't make it this month, you're going to be back asking me for some next month. And after a while, that's going to get me worn out. I mean, if, if I have to give God 10% and trust what God is going to do for me, why don't you give God 10% and trust what God is going to do for you? Needs are met. When you look at the text, the text, the text says... All grace will abound. All your needs will be met. Let me tell you, I may not have everything I want. You may not have everything you want, but your needs are met. Right. How many people slept under the bridge last night? How many people stayed in the hospital all night? How many people stayed in jail all night? Let me tell you, how many people have gone hungry? Let me tell you, your needs are met. You got clothes on, you sharp. You got a smile on your face, you're breathing, you're inhaling and exhaling, your, your heart is pumping blood to every extremity of your body, you are not laying down flat. I know they have some clean jail cells, but it's good for me to be in church this morning. And I just want to confess now, I've done some things that I deserve to be locked up for 50, 60, 99 years, but God's amazing grace kept me. God kept me. It wasn't because I was so good. It wasn't because I was a preacher. It wasn't because uh, I just done everything right. It's only because of God's grace. The text declares that God's grace abounds. 
Not only does it say God's grace abound, this word abound means in abundance. This word abound means that God's grace abounds to every time and everything for everybody who fits in this category. We have people walking around quoting scripture when they get in trouble. Now, God, you know. You said, God, and we ought to quote scripture when we're in trouble and when we're out of trouble. We ought to know the word and we ought to tell God what God has said. But the problem is we quote scripture and we haven't read it all month. And when we get in trouble, we use prayer as a fire state religion. We use prayer by saying, now look, God, now look, God, you said in your word that all things work together. For them that love you and the God apart according to you. And you've been doing what you want to do all this time. Now you're going to call God. Yeah, you ought to call on him. Yeah, you ought to remind him of his word. But God allows grace to abound when we obey his word. And the thing about it is, God is not asking us for everything. He just asking for 10%. 10% of your time each day would be 2.5 hours that you would spend time with God. Amen. Break it up any way you want to. 2.5 hours. 24 hours a day. 2.5 hours you need to spend time talking to God. He wants your time, your talent, and your treasure. One of the worst things that I see is people in churches that do not exercise the gifts that God has given you. That's why every chance I get, Sister Hughes, I exercise my gift. Y'all don't want me to sing? That's all right. I ain't singing to y'all anyhow. Boy, that's terrible English. If you don't want me to sing, Sister David, it's all right. I'm not singing to you, not for you. I'm singing to the Almighty God. And I praise him for giving me another chance to say, come in the middle. The second thing is, I'm only giving God back what God has given me. And if God has given me this tenor voice that goes and comes and flows over to, to a baritone and bass all in one sentence, it's all right. I'm just giving God what God has given me. That's why one Wednesday night, Sister Whitlock and Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles and I, we're going to shock all of y'all in practice. We're going to sing unto the Lord. And Sister Irvin is going to be singing some prayer. We're going to sing unto the Lord, and the choir is going to be put to shame because the choir will not sing with what God has given them. And if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Some of us are given to hospitality. God has given us hospitality. We have the first impression ministry that, that watches the parking lot, that ushers people into their seat and greet them at the door. I mean, you have that personality, but you won't use it. God wants 10% of your talent back to him every day. And finally, God wants 10% of your treasure. 10%. And look at the results of 10%. The results of 10%. And see, you you chose to let them borrow money that they weren't going to give back anyway. Never loan anybody any money that you can't stand to lose. Don't co-sign for anybody. Proverbs said, do not be surety for anybody. Don't co-sign for them because you just bought a new car. I said, you just bought a new car. What we have to understand is that we love the Lord so much that we want to be in his will. We want to be in his way. We want to walk with him. And if we show our love toward him continuously, then the things that God is going to bless us with will become no problem. Have you ever been going down the street somewhere, walked into a place, and they tell you you need this, and you raise your, up your purse and your pocketbook and say that's no problem? It's because God went ahead of you. And God was able to bless you and touch the heart of the person that, that was uh, interviewing you, uh, talking to you, uh, uh, making a decision on your behalf. Let me tell you, favor has never been fair. It will never be fair because God gives us grace. He gives us mercy and he gives us favor. 
And as God gives us favor, no man can stand against favor. I just thank God for favor. I, I thank God for favor. And I don't apologize for my favor. I'm not going to be arrogant with it, but I know when I pray, I'm going to ask God, God, I may not have the right amount of money, but God give me favor. You see, you don't you don't need a, a whole lot of money when you have favor. Because when, when we purchased this seven acres of land, we didn't have a whole lot of money. And when I looked at the sign out there, I said to the man, I'm going to offer him $200,000 for seven acres. The, the, the real estate agent for the, for the owner said to me, he ain't going to accept it. He's already turned some other folk down. But what he didn't know, I'm in the background, in the cut, while he's telling me over the phone that he's not going to accept $200,000. I'm back there saying, Lord, give us favor. Lord, we need a place. We need land. Lord, give us favor. Lord, this is the one I've identified. Lord, I believe you led me to it. Lord, give us favor. He called me back and said, man, you need to go get you a lot of ticket now. He said to me, he said, because I don't know what God you pray to, but he's agreed to your offer of $200,000 for seven acres. It's because our church are givers. It's because we are givers and we give regardless of what goes on. Amen. And then on the sign in there, it was no longer $200,000. For some apparent reason, brother Carl, out of the middle of nowhere. It went from 200000 that I offered him to $198,340.28. It's because of God's favor and because God does things that we can't even imagine. So my, my point to you is the giver is enriched. The receiver needs are met. And finally, God, the source and the blessings of everything is praised. God is the source and the blesser of everything, and he's the one that receives the glory. So stop trying to pity pitch. The reason why you pity pitch is because you're too stingy with God. Matter of fact, when you give too much, God still keeping record. God is still on the throne. He hasn't let it go unnoticed. Just continue to give. If you want to receive, you got to give. Well, the reason why we put the pericope up there is because hopefully you'll go back and read the pericope, the entire pericope, which is in this case the whole chapter. And the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. It didn't say God allows you to give to him in order to sow. He says God gives seed to the sower. It didn't say God give you seed, then you go sow. It said God gives seed to the sower. In other words, you already a sower, you already planting seed, and God comes right back and gives you more seed. In the country, we planted butter beans. We planted butter beans, and and we go, we got, we got to finish this row out. I, I don't care what how hot it get out there before lunch time. You got to finish this row out. There are holes dug in the ground, and you got to put seeds in there. And they'll tell you you put eight to ten seeds in this ground. And when you put eight to ten seeds in this ground, then a whole bunch of seeds come up. Let me tell you what you have to understand is. God has a way of blessing you supernaturally where you will never understand it. Just be a good steward. Commit to that. God, I'm going to be a good steward. God, I'm going to change my mindset. I'm going to change all that tradition I've been taught. I'm going to trust God for a whole heap of things. <clears throat> we over here fighting over this. Argue with God. Well, God, you know, I made $15.50 this week. So, God, I'm going to give you a uh, dollar and 55 cents. It's okay to round it up. God won't get mad if you increase it. That's why God gives us an increase. When you see me pray and you hear me pray, I say, Lord, thank you for the income. That's what God has given us. 
And then I say, thank you for the increase. That's what God adds on. And the good thing about God, he not even just add all the time. Sometimes he multiplies. God gives seed to the sower. I want you to hear me today. God gives seed to the sower. You don't have to round it up to the exact figure, the right, the right penny. Round it up to the next dollar, the next $10, the next $50. Give until God continue to bless you. Now we know. That God has fixed all of our income. And guess what? I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about what God. I'm not worried about Social Security. I, I, I'm not, I'm not worried, worried about whether it's there later. The God that I serve. The God that I serve. I told you in 2016. That the orange man with the red hair. With the fake hair. Will be put before us. And the same people that he messed over, we were going to see them take him down. And we are seeing it now. And it doesn't matter if he ever becomes president again. God is in control. And since God is in control, God has a way of tearing one down right in the presence of our enemies. God can do it. He did it for Jesus. Jesus died on Calvary. They buried him. He rose from the dead. After they killed him, they thought they had him. The preacher said even the grave and death had a conversation. The grave said, I got him. I'm going to hold him. The grave declares that I'm going to hold him. I got him. I got him. I'm going to hold him. And when he said, I got him, I'm going to hold him, he thought he had him. Death says, I got him. Death says, I got Adam down here. I got him. Death says, I got a good track record. Even though Lazarus got up, I got him. But there come a rumbling early that third day morning. Jesus got up with all power. Grace was about it. He got up out of that third day morning. Before Pilate could change to God, he got up out of that Thursday morning. Before the rooster could crow, he got up out of that Thursday morning. Before the women could have not anoint his body, he got up out of that Thursday morning. Before Peter and John got in the foot race to get to the tomb, he got up out of that Thursday morning. He rose with all power. In his hand, he, he not only gave he gave all he had. Our God gave his very best. In Jesus Christ. And that same Jesus is still giving to us. The Bible discusses with us that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us. Every time we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You got any sin in your life? You got anything that you need to confess? Jesus, the great high priest, is interceding for you and me. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. Just come and try Jesus. He can get it right for you. The door is open. The invitation is extended. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, you can do that right here, right now. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite Christ into your life. Just repeat after me this little short prayer. And ask Jesus to come into your life. In order for you to get to heaven, you got to trust Jesus to be your Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, believing that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, He gave His life as a ransom for you and me. We believe that you're saved. We believe that you're different. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, are you in between church homes? I recommend the New Beginning Church. But Jesus is the captain of the ship. But Jesus is the center of attention. But Jesus is the main attraction. Will you come? The door is open. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will save you. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for giving unto us. We thank you for the privilege now to come and give to you. We ask you to bless every giver and every gift. We ask you to multiply what we bring before you, Father God, that there will be meat in your house, that we will be enriched, Lord, that, Father God, that you will be praised and glorified, and that every need will be met. We ask you to bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I want to thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. To tithe offerings and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. And we're excited to be able to give to him. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Grace, great, great, she had a hand up over here. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Stand. Call first and first until the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's ties off and inside of this gift. Take a this side to stand. Call first and first until the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's ties off and we sat here together.
Father God, we thank you for these gifts to actually bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. members as they celebrate their birthdays Sunday, June 25th, immediately after service. Everyone is invited to attend. There will be a short meeting immediately after service today for all persons born in the month of May and June. Father's Day photos. Father's Day photos will be taken on Sunday, June 18th. Invite your fathers and children to NBC on Father's Day and get your photos taken. Weedy Scholarship Banquet. You're invited to attend Weedy Scholarship Banquet on Saturday, June 24th at 11.30 a.m. The Turning Hearts Music Ensemble will perform. Tickets are $45. Donations are encouraged. Bible Listening and Journaling. We are listening and journaling through the Bible for 2023. Don't forget to listen every day. Turning Hearts Music Ensemble Summer Enrichment Music Camp. NBC will host the THME Summer Enrichment Music Camp on July 17th through 21st. The camp fee is $85 per student, ages eight and up. Please see Sister Catherine Davis for more information. <coughs> Please remember those on our prayer list. Lucia Galvan, Darrington Family, Richard Family, Vivian Eslaha, Al Brinson, Saronce Miller, Angel Rodriguez, Priscilla Johnson, Raymond Alfred Jr., <coughs> Willie Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, Omar Galvan, Ed Brennan and family, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, Laborers for the Harvest, Protection in Schools, and World Peace. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. Father, we thank you for blessing us with the spirit of prayer. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless. God, you are God. You see everything. You know everything. There are people who are hurting. The people who need your hope, need your strength. They're listed on our prayer list, and there are some that are not. Lord, we ask you to bless in the name of Jesus. Bless Father God and heal and strengthen. God, we know you as God. You, you have shown yourself so many times. You blessed and healed so many ways. Lord, we ask you to do it again. Lift up every bow down head. Give ease to every troubled mind. Bless us with goals and bless us to reach our goals. Bless us, Father God, to see you as God like none other. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless the bereaved families. Lord, we ask you to comfort them in times like these. We pray, Father God, that you bless the sick and the shut in. Lord, we need you now. Lord, we ask you to bless in the name of Jesus. God, we know you are the victorious God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless and show yourself victorious. Give us much more to shout about. We praise you for who you are. We bless you for what you have made us to be. Lord, we ask you to bless us to continue to shout. Lord, we ask you to reveal yourself to us in a mighty way. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. So in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thanks our visitors to stand. If you're, you're visiting with us for the first time, you stand, say hello to us, tell us who you are. Tell us how you got invited here. Did you take a wrong turn? And we're glad you did.
if you're visiting with us, why don't you stand and just say hello to us. Tell us your name and how you got here. I can't hear you. This is not my first time. My name is Mia Shanko now. I've worked with Terry Martin for many years. Oh, okay. And I'm just happy to be back in the place. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. We're glad you have come. Thank you for being a part of our service. Amen. If you would, fill out a business card. And uh, they're going to give you one if they haven't given you one. Fill out a business card and like to call you in and see how you enjoy it by your day here today. Amen. We want to make sure that we keep young people in prayer as um, many of them, most of them are out of school and then some of them that are still going to school. We're, we're praying that God continue to hold his hands on them and continue to stay the hand of the devil. Amen. We want God to stay the hand of the devil in such a way that the devil will not have his place with our youth and our young people. Amen. Amen. Is there anything that I'm missing? Anything? All minds clear? Um, first, I would like to uh, thank and praise God for allowing me to be here. Uh, I am just here to say thank you so very, very much. On yesterday, the ladies of the New Beginning Church, my family and friends, surprised me with a surprise birthday party. And I'm telling you, it was just I was so surprised. I cannot believe that you all got that over on me. So thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I just appreciate you. Appreciate you, New Beginning Church. So thank you all so much for all that you do. Thank you. Amen. Well, Ms. Chan, if you dismiss uh, the birthday people, a meeting right after this meeting. Also, I have here some... Uh, some charts on tithing. Please take one, two, three. Make sure you take these charts. It lays out how much money you could possibly make and how much you ought to be giving in tithing offer. Amen. Please, uh, on Bray, Braylon, will you come and get these and, and pass them out as they, they exit the door, please. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for meeting us here again and revealing yourself. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, as we leave this place. We ask you that you keep us in your presence. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us to have a heart of giving. Bless our giving, Father God, that our giving will continue to, to be a blessing to others, be a blessing to you, and overflow. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We ask you to bless us this week, that as we go through this week, Father God, we will see the mighty hand of God blessing us to a point of overflowing. Uh, bless us in our prayers, Lord. We ask you to answer prayers that you've never answered before on our behalf. We pray, Father God, that you give us finances that we've never even imagined. We pray, Father God, that you give us health and strength, Father God, like never before. And Lord, we ask you to supply all our needs. Lord, supply our needs. And Lord, we ask you to reveal yourself by presenting us with what we want. And Lord, we know you can do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing by saying. Amen. God bless you.